Why am I still using Linux in 2024? It has been quite a long time since I have been using Linux. It's been like, I don't know, two and a half years, I would say now, or close to three years before I made the YouTube channel. So YouTube channel age is around like two and a half years, I would say, of using Linux as my main operating system. And Linux has gone through quite a lot, I would say. It's gone through a lot of ups and downs, and a lot of things have happened in the gaming space of Linux also. It has progressed a lot, and a lot of gaming studios have a supported the Steam Deck slash Linux, but you know, also some companies have decided to block Linux because of not enabling the entity to be supported with it. Well, overall, I think Linux has gone through a lot, but why do I still use it in 2024? Now, I think the first one is about installing packages on Linux. If you have not seen or heard about how Linux installs packages, basically there is a repository that you grab your packages from. So you don't go to a website to grab a .exe. There is one way of doing that. Either you grab the manual package itself, but most of the time when you are looking for a package, you go to your GUI store or you open up your terminal, which is more of an advanced way of doing it. But if we go to here and we open up our GUI store, we can see like one application I have open right now, which is GPU Screen Recorder, which is another video that I'm going to do later today. And it's, you know, pretty easy. You just open up this store. It has a bunch of applications for you. You can easily go to each one. You can go like, I don't know, Spotify, for example. So here is Spotify. We can select FlatHub, which FlatHub slash Flatpak is an application package manager that you can use to install certain packages. And FlatHub is like the repo that you grab the package from. So Spotify has their application on Flathub that you can easily grab and download and install and then start using that package. And then also Flatpak is containerized, meaning uh, its packages are in this own little box. You can think of it as it's like it's in a box with these packages and with Spotify and Spotify basically won't break when your system updates, for example, because of that containerization. So I think that's one of the reasons why I am still using Linux is because downloading packages, getting actual programs programs is a lot easier in my opinion than using it to get packages on windows it's just it's a lot more of a pain when you're grabbing packages on windows you have to either grab a .exe or a .msi you can grab packages from the microsoft store i do know that exists but i feel like that's like contemporary because windows likes to force certain things on that store and they use their own packages system on that also so it's kind of like don't get it why can't they just do what linux is doing here where they have a repo where people can post their applications to it and then people can just easily grab it and then there would be no real big issues here. The main one is privacy when using Linux and it's more about just getting as far away as possible from these type of companies like Microsoft. As a world in the internet scheme of things, Linux is a kind of like a open book. You can look at whatever is available with its code and you can even fork a certain project if you want to to use that certain code um, depending on the license that's on it but overall Linux's privacy is extremely well because of how open source it is and that also means that when it comes to its security it's a lot more better than Windows I would say even though you know Microsoft has a huge team of people who are working on bug fixes and whole of security I would say that looking for bugs and stuff is really good on Linux because of how everyone gets to look at the code and they can go, oh, here's this issue. We need to fix this. It could be up to like a couple thousand, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people online looking at debugging different issues in the Linux space. And that's what I like about it. And the fact that I get as far away as from Microsoft and other certain products where the only place they can really look at my information is in a web browser necessarily. And the other one is like the community. Like I said, there's a lot of people in the Linux space you can easily contact depending on the project that you're doing you can go to their github or go to their GitLab and submit an issue or look at the commits that they're sending and that brings a really nice and awesome experience when it comes to what is happening to the projects or the applications that I am using like this desktop environment KD Plasma I can go to the GitLab of KD Plasma and I go okay Plasma 6.2 or 
6.3, which are coming out very soon, or 6.2 is coming out very soon, but I can look at like what's in the future of this desktop environment. What are they working on that is going to improve my desktop experience? And what can I do to submitting issues or problems that I'm having with the desktop environment that I am using so that they can fix those issues? I feel like that's really good when it comes to Linux. You can easily contact those developers and get those issues reported while on Windows, Windows will just direct you like their support team will just direct you to some odd website with some help forums or help tutorials that won't really do anything and your issue won't really get brought across to the right people who actually want to fix the problem. Now the other one you might not think of is Proton. Now what is Proton? Well it's a compatibility layer for playing Windows games on Linux. It tries to translate these Windows API calls to a Linux machine so Linux can actually understand it and you can play that said game and Proton is for off of Wine which Wine is to try and run Windows software to Linux so Linux can understand it and you can use that Windows software on Linux. Now there has been many cases where I have decided to play some game and there's all these random issues on Windows for example and then I try it on Linux and there is no issues of those issues that are happening on Windows and maybe there's some other little issues that may appear but in general most of the time when you do use Proton usually it will basically it will improve your experience of playing video games. There have been examples of older games being improved because of the graphics APIs that are used in Proton like DXVK. One example that had popped in my head instantly is GTA 4. GTA 4 on Windows has some issues and people use DXVK to get a performance boost out of it. So if you are using Proton on Linux and you're trying to play GTA 4, like I did a couple of days ago, the performance is great because you're using DXVK to improve that performance. And there have been many cases where like, for example, a game that I like to play a lot is called The Finals, which is a FPS arena shooter. And it has a lot of, I would say, Unreal Engine crashes that happen on Windows, while on Linux, most of the issues that did happen when it first got supported under Proton are now fixed, really no real big issues that happen necessarily with the finals. But like with my friends, I have seen them and myself when I used to play the finals on Windows, it had a lot of Unreal Engine crashes, while when you run it through Proton, you don't experience those issues. That's why I like Proton, it just improves your experience when playing games, I would say, and Valve works very hard on improving compatibility with new games that do get released on Windows and they try to make them work on the Steam Deck and then it also works on Linux desktop and it just yeah, improves the experience. Now the other one is, uh, and this one might be a bit controversial, and this is about the AMD GPU drivers on Linux. I would say they are extremely good. I think Valve and the community of Linux developers have done an amazing job of improving uh, the AMD drivers on Linux and they continue to improve it in the coming years that I've been using my RX 6700. Now you don't get the Radeon control panel on Linux with the Mesa plus AMD GPU kernel driver. That's what we use on Linux. AMD GPU is included in the kernel as a driver, a module driver, and then there is Mesa, which is the user space part of the AMD GPU. And so there isn't an actual Radeon control panel, which is okay, I guess, because there is alternatives for the features that are included in that control panel you can use for like frame generation that works for the Proton if the game supports FSR 3 and then I think for like recording there's another great application I like to recommend which is called GPU screen recorder and there's probably a couple other things that you can just do on Linux probably either through the system settings of a desktop environment or some other application that you can use but I would say that uh, for me personally the AMD drivers are extremely good because I don't use the control panel and when it comes to let's say shader pre-caching that's pretty good on Linux, I would say. It's a little bit better than on Windows. And when it comes to the performance with RADV inside of Mesa, which is the, um, I think it's the graphics API that's used for specifically for Vulkan on Linux with AMD, it performs extremely well versus Windows where you can see an uplift of like maybe 10 to 20 extra FPS in some games, I would say. And then the other one, this kind of brings me back to the whole open source nature of Linux. You have these FOSS applications. Now for me, I'm not for 
forced to use any type of proprietary application like the Microsoft suite or the Adobe products because of some like workspace or something that I'm that I'm in I'm working for someone and they're forcing me to use these applications that's not the case for me so I can use a lot of FOSS applications like GIMP for example I use for creating thumbnails and then like another application I like to use is Bottles that is a great application for managing Windows software with, with the use of Proton or Wine to run Windows software or Windows games and this kind of like containerization so like the bottle that basically says like each bottle has its own software inside of it but you can see here I have two separated I have Ubisoft and I have EA so I have the EA client installed of this one and then I have Ubisoft launcher installed of this one and they're separated so you can like easily manage each Windows software really well and another application that I like to use is Mission Center it's a very nice uh, system monitor that looks very similar to Windows 11 and there's even like a couple other ones that I can think of if I scroll through here you know there's like goof cord which is a nice discord web application or vest top there's plenty of easy effects we've got GPU screen recorder we got Haruna which is a video player you know there's plenty of applications that are on Linux when it comes to FOSS applications that I truly enjoy using and I like how the developers continue to update it and improve and bring new features to them it really just improve the experience you have on the Linux desktop space and I feel like one of the greatest things about Linux itself is when you combine it with open source nature of it and the FOSS applications and the desktop environment choice that you get you get that choice of where you can remove something if you want to you can go from Linux from scratch if you want to or Gentoo or Arch and just like build it out yourself you can make the operating system your own experience and that's what I like about it I can I can install Arch for example use like the Arch install script get most things installed and then I can kind of just nick pick each package that I want to use so then I don't have to have necessarily a bloated distro install of a Linux system and that's that's the thing someone else might not like that they may want to have everything installed that they need uh, and they don't really care about having a minimal system they just want a system to work and that's okay Linux can do that if you just want to have a steam OS machine you can use Bazite for example and you can install it on a handheld or a little machine and a lounge room for example is like a home theater PC and just run that with run little games on it you know, you got this whole choice of like you can do what you want with the operating system and that's what I really like about it well with something like Windows for example when you try to do let's say updates for example it's going to force you to do those updates at some point and I know there's like scripts you can do to like disable those things but for like a normal user I think it's come to the point where they don't really want to deal with like those types of things and I feel like uh, distros like Bazite for example really show that you can install a Linux desktop and it has everything installed and it does a point release system where it's um, extremely good at stability when it comes to releasing those updates and when it comes to grabbing applications they're extremely easy you go through a GUI store and the majority of things you do is through a GUI I think when you try to run Windows for example and you try to let's say remove Edge and then you do an update it's going to reinstall it at some point without you knowing it's just going to reinstall it and go hey Edge is Edge, Edge is in your application menu again well you can re remove it I guess even though I'm pretty sure the option you can't remove Edge so it's like you have to use these scripts and you have to try and do all these workarounds well on Linux you kind of just get to choose what you want to install and that's what I, I really enjoy about Linux I would say just, just you get to pick what you want to install on the operating system and I think the best part about Linux is its community now I know uh, the community can be good and it can be bad at times I've definitely experienced it there's a lot of people who enjoy using Linux and there's a lot of people who hate Linux for some reason I don't really understand the hate towards Linux and maybe because it's just the community we're just really um yeah we really emphasize on how great Linux is when it still has a decent amount of flaws I would say and it still has a decent amount of way to go but it's getting there it's extremely close to being really good for like desktop use so I guess the last thing would be like Adobe suite applications or Microsoft suite applications but the best thing about Linux is its community 
community. There's a lot of people who want to see Linux succeed and become a major player when it comes to the gaming space or the desktop space or production space or music or video production, all of that. They, everyone wants to see those things succeed in the Linux space. And it's definitely coming to that point with things like market share growing and Valve helping out a lot in the gaming space and even like anti-cheat stuff may be getting improved at some point as well, which may improve Linux gaming at some point also. So that's my conclusion with why I use Linux in 2024 and why I'm going to continue to use Linux for the foreseeable future until either, I guess, like, I don't know, Linux dies or something and there's something better that we can use. Or I guess I just stop using Linux and I stop using a desktop PC and there's something else I can use that's better than a desktop PC. I don't really know, but that's my conclusion. So if you guys did enjoy this video, definitely give it a like, definitely subscribe to the channel. And uh, thank you to my members also. I show a screenshot of them now. I really do appreciate it, guys. I'm giving you money every single month really do appreciate it and i would like to know uh why you use linux today is it because you like the open source nature the community or do you like using proton like i do or um is it something else maybe you're like making a game for linux i would really like to know in the comments down below so i'll see you guys in the next video peace